Welcome back, 4th Dimension viewers. I have here a short trailer from the Vancouver Aquarium, where I got to test drive the Fuji X-T5 and the 30mm macro out in the wild. If you like this kind of gear and shooting tips video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more weekly content. Enjoy! Versus the tilt out kind of screen. Um, I mean, there's a place, time and a place for it, but with the strap in the way, and you know, I, I like having a screen like this. It's just more intuitive for a lot of things. Um, a flippy screen's great, but not for everything. Wow. Wow. Oh, the colors are so nice. Check that out. All the other fish in the background. I love how fast I can change between photo and video mode too. Like it just uh, took took like no seconds to change from one to the other. Oh wow! Look at this. Oh, crazy. For low light, one of the best lenses that I have for combating uh, the APS-C kind of limitations is the 50 f1, and uh, it's you know it's a 75 mil equivalent focal length, but I get so much light out of that image, and I can shoot portraits and shoot event work where people are a bit further away and the low light I can bring down my ISO maybe to a thousand versus if I had you know an f2 or f2.8 lens I'd be at like 1600 or 3200 so that's usually one of the ways I combat it and the 16 mil f1.4 is a great lens for that as well. For photography I usually like to wear black anyways but especially for this if you're wearing a white shirt the glass would reflect everything so Definitely bring even like a black jacket to cover the, the reflections is a really useful tip. Um, but black is always the way to go for, uh, for photography. Like as I'm shooting, I'm covering there, there. So sometimes, yeah, if you're getting like a soft image, sometimes it just blur off the glass. So try really just cover, make sure you don't see any any glare. Try that. There's no. Do that again, please. Please do that again. Yeah, I love it. Like, just switching between photo and video, like, just as like the X-T4, I'm glad they kept this. Like, even though it's not a video-centric camera, for hybrid shooting, this is something that the X-T4 did really right, so. Glad to see it on the X-T5. So we just wrapped up at the Vancouver Aquarium. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, it was great to test out the new 30mm and the X-T5 to be able to get really close to different interesting things. I think the jellyfish was the coolest thing we got to experience today. And I think the detail really shows out of this lens and this uh, sensor. Even when we're dealing with frogs that are kind of far away, we have that ability to punch in. And I think the 30 mil focal length is a really useful focal length for everyday shooting. We could be continuing on and, and shooting in the park. And you know, whenever you want to get a macro shot of something up close, like even the pond here, you really can get that versatile um, use of just getting closer and closer and closer to your subject. I think one thing to just keep an eye on is the minimum focus distance is so close that sometimes you almost just hit the thing that you're you're trying to shoot. So if it's a if it's a bug, it's an insect, you might actually scare it away. Or if it's your pet, they're definitely gonna you know back away from you, um, and you're gonna probably block some of that light that you need for that shot. So something to keep an eye on. But overall, I really like this lens. 
I think if you're a macro shooter, this will be a nice addition to your kit, but it won't replace your 100 mil or 90 mil kind of equivalent focal length. But I think if you're just getting in and you want to dabble with, with macro capabilities and have a, a normal 45 mil focal length, I think this is a great lens to check out. So thank you again so much for watching and see you guys next time.